Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I will present the topics of Shariah Audit and Compliance and how the Shariah Audit exercise in Islamic financial institution in Malaysia. For the introduction, Shariah Audit is referred to the periodical assessment that conducted from time to time basis. This is to provide the independent assessment and to improve the degree of compliance in relation to Islamic financial institution business operation. With the main objective of this Sharia audit is to ensure that a sound and effectiveness of internal control system for Sharia compliance in Islamic financial institution. Scope of Sharia audit. Sharia audit will cover all aspects of the Islamic financial institution business operation and activities. This is include on the three scope, which is the audit of financial statement. Second, on the compliance audit, which is on the organization structure, people, process, and the information technology application system. And lastly, to review the adequacy of the Sharia governance process. For example, how the Sharia governance in particular Islamic financial institution is practices. Is it to have a good or weak Sharia governance process? However, there's a challenge to conduct a Sharia audit in Malaysia. First, this is because there is absence of proper framework to govern the practice of internal and external of Sharia audit. Second, to develop the human capital to conduct the Sharia audit effectively, which is the person who have Shari who have strong Sharia and strong accounting knowledge. Function is under the third line of defense, which is they have to report directly to the audit committee in case next we we'll move to the Sharia audit process, which is the main focus for today's presentation. In the Sharia audit process, there are three phases, which is first on the to plan and design the Sharia audit approach, second to perform test of control and test of transaction, and lastly to complete the Sharia audit and issue the audit report. On the first phase, to plan and design a Sharia audit approach, we have six process. The first process in the planning stage is to accept the job and to perform the initial plan. Usually, for the new audit engagement, the Sharia auditor have to follow a few procedures before they start an audit. First, on the client acceptance and retention. The Sharia auditor have to make sure that they have a sufficient personal skills, expertise, and they're able to complete the engagement within the timeline. Second, they have to comply with the relevant ethical requirements, such as on the independent declaration. Second, to identify for any potential conflict of interest with the entity. And third, to identify and evaluate for any circumstances that will create the threat to the independence or action taken. Next, to perform the initial plan. The Sharia auditor have to establish their term of engagement. For example, what is the precondition for an audit and the agreement on the audit engagement terms. Second, they have to establish their scope and timing for the audit engagement. For example, in the financial statement, what is the financial reporting framework that they are referred to and when is the timetable or planning date for their audit engagement. Next, they have to give the direction the, and the audit engagement. And lastly, they have to publish the engagement team, who is the leaders and how many persons that will conduct the Sharia audit process. Now we will move to the second process, which is to understand the business and industry. In order for the Sharia auditor to understand the client businesses, they have to follow these four procedures. First, on the industry and external environment, the Sharia auditor have to know what is the economic condition and regulatory requirement for their client businesses. For example, in the Islamic banking, what is the unique regulatory accounting requirement or treatment in that particular Islamic bank? Second, on the business operation and processes, the Sharia auditor should understand what is the principal activities of their client business. Second, on the revenue sources, what is the major sources of their revenue and others? Third is on the management and governance. The Sharia auditor have to know what is the operating style and, and the client governance system. For example, they can see the corporate charter to understand who is the key management involved. And lastly, after understanding the business and industry, the Sharia auditor can uh, understand the objective and strategies they are looking for for their audit scope, which is to achieve the compliance, right, and obligation. If you can see here, this is the example of objective and Sharia audit strategies. From this mechanism, what we can expect from the Sharia audit works. From third process is to perform the preliminary analytical procedures. Analytical procedures is defined as the analysis of the significant ratio and trend that resulted to a potential risk to a business such as the inconsistent with the relevant information. So the analytical procedure may be performed at the three levels, which is first before the audit start, second during the fieldwork process, and lastly after the audit engagement. Process is to set the maturity and sharing our risk level of assessment. Usually for the planning maturity is used for the financing activities, and the planning maturity is the prerequisite to the to validate the contract or the transaction. There are four models that auditor can use to express their maturity on financial statement, which is first on the single rule, size rule, average rule, and formula method. Next, on the Sharia risk level assessment. Sharia auditor will use their professional judgment based on the risk area and impact of the, of the Islamic financial institution to set the risk level. Fifth process is to understand the internal control and assess the control risk. The Sharia auditor have to conduct the internal control evaluation. Last 
process is to develop an overall Sharia audit plan and Sharia audit program. This is to determine the scope of the audit program and to assess the internal control system and the key risk factors. So this is the example of audit program that determine based on the scope of Sharia audit objective. Then, second phase is to perform test of control and test of transaction. This is the execution process and usually will do at the audit table. There is four process which is to perform the analytical procedures, perform the test of control, perform the test of the transaction and to assess the Sharia non-compliant risk and other potential effects. The first process in the phase two is to perform analytical procedures. This analytical procedures is conducted during the field audit with the objective to indicate for any possible problem with the financial record related to the Sharia matter of the audit that can be investigated more during the field work. Second, the Sharia auditor can apply the professional skepticism in identifying the issues of this test. Second process is to perform the test of control. The objective of this test is to evaluate the effectiveness of the design and implementation of internal control in Sharia function. From this test, we can identify the risk of the audit areas. For example, the Sharia auditor can check on the job designation for the financing process in Islamic banks. Third process is to perform the test of transaction. The objective of this test is to detect for any material misstatement or fraud related to the transaction or account balances. Usually, we will conduct the substantive test, which is on the test of detail. We will watch the transaction with related documents to check the accuracy, the existence of the transaction. So for the test of detail of the transaction, usually Sharia Auditor will conduct it uh, using the sampling basis. The method that we'll use is Sharia Auditor will use their professional judgment to select the sample and the sample size is, will depend on the risk involved or identified by the risk assessment. Our last uh, process in uh, phase two is to assess the Sharia non-compliant risk and other financial effects. The objective of this test is to examine the possible failure of Sharia related matters of the Islamic financial institution to meet the obligation to Sharia principle. So they can refer to BNM regulation, Sharia rules and regulation and changes in fatwas. In the case of Sharia non-compliant risk event, the Sharia auditor will determine the level of the risk, which is low, that is insignificant to the IFI, second, medium, meaning that the risk is significant or high risk which is affect the structure of sharia principle of the IFI. How to check on the how to check it? Uh, sharia auditor will check on the compliance of the transaction. Or the last phase is to complete the sharia audit and issue an audit report. In this phase, there are four processes. In the phase three, sharia auditor will accumulate all the audit evidence based on their findings and observation. Then they will write it in the formal documentation. Next, they will evaluate the result based on the risk area. For example, if there is high risk area, they will conduct a close-up meeting with the head of international Sharia audit and they will communicate on it. They will conduct discussion that will share the major observation to the auditee on Sharia method that have been identified. And they will provide the on-site rectification process on the observation made. Then they will write the comment and audit findings based on the discussion. Lastly, they will issue the audit report. First, they will issue the draft Sharia audit report after the audit method is highlighted to the auditee to get the justification on the audit methods. Usually, they give Usually, the auditor will give the timeline to the management to reply usually for the 7 to 14 days. And then the final Sharia audit report will be issued that provide the audit opinion of the auditor on the engagement. Next, this is the sample of audit committee report in audited financial statement. And if you can see here, the auditor has expressed their opinion based on, the, based on their finding, which is on the Sharia related matters. And this report will be authorized by the chairman of the Sharia committee and four Sharia committee members. Finally, for the conclusion, why we need Sharia Audit? Sharia Audit rule is very important to uphold the Sharia principle and values to ensure the compliance of IFI operation in offering their Sharia compliance services. The final output from the Sharia Audit findings will be presented to the Sharia Audit Committee. So from here, the Sharia Audit Committee will acknowledge for any SNC risk event. So from here, Sharia Audit Committee will issue the Sharia Committee report that will be published together with the external audited financial statement of the Islamic financial institution. And the audited report is very important to the users of the stakeholders because this report will inform the audit opinions on the Sharia compliance and relevant information in helping users to make the decision. That's all from me. Thank you.